My name is Calvin Spotted. I'm from Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. I was born in a place called Grass Mountain. That's a community in Rosebud. I currently live in Porcupine on a Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. Ever since I was young, I uh, always been taught to help my elders. Makes me feel good to know that someone that I helped staying warm to the cold weather. As a woodcutter or as a volunteer, th that's what always keeps me going. It, it just makes you feel good all over. When they show their appreciation, when they say thank you, that, that gets me right here. And that's how I was raised. I was six years old when my father first told me that um, of the people I come from, we come from a line of men that led people, that did things for the people, that did people good. When I heard that from him, it kind of surprised me. And I said, wow, a chief, huh? And I asked him, I said, how does someone become a chief? And he said, you have to help the people, not think of yourself. The people come first. And then you. Wounded Knee Cemetery on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, where nearly 150 Lakota men and women, elders and children, were hastily buried in a mass grave after the U.S. 7th Cavalry opened fire on them from a hilltop with Hotchkiss cannons in December 1890. He said, your great-great-grandfather was the leader of these people that got massacred there at Wounded Knee in 1890. I said, what, what happened? Did they do something wrong? He said, they didn't do nothing wrong, but they went and killed them. Our great-great-grandfather got killed there. He said, that they shot him in the head. His name was Spotted Out. Um, in Lakota, it's Hekaka, Glishka. People were calling him Bigfoot. That was a derogatory name. Everybody knew him as Spotted Out. And it's just the agency people, the ones that wanted to insult him, were the only ones that were calling him Bigfoot. Following the massacre, those lucky enough to escape the carnage crawled through ravines and creeks finally taking refuge in a nearby church where they first described what happened. Richard Dick spotted out. He was the son of my great-great-grandfather. Him and my grandpa, Jasper Sr., they both survived the massacre. My grandfather, Jasper, was a young boy. His mother was shot on the side, but they both went to Holy Rosary Mission to seek for help because they were hungry, they were cold, and at the same time, they were scared. Today, many non-Native historians continue to refer to the massacre as the Battle of Wounded Knee. However, there are many Lakota descendants of survivors who still pass on the eyewitness accounts of their grandparents. They were terrified that the armies would come looking for them and kill them. For the Lakota people, the Wounded Knee Massacre severed the sacred hoop of their nation, marking the beginning of a long decline into despair and grief. I still believe that up to this day that the 7th Cavalry in particular were out to get revenge. At that time, there was, there was a hit list out. The very first one was Sitting Bull, and then Crazy Horse, and then Spotted Up. When the killing stopped, soldiers descended upon the dead, taking clothing, ceremonial objects, and scalps as souvenirs. Many of these items ended up in museums far from Wounded Knee. The U.S. military then awarded the Medal of Honor to 20 soldiers, and the 1891 Indian Depredations Act awarded compensation to non-natives and friendly Indians. At that time, my grandfathers, they were afraid that the military would come and finish what they started there at Wounded Knee. And that was to kill any descendants, true descendants of Spotted Elk. To this day, the victims and the descendants of Chief Spotted Elk's band have never received a formal apology, nor compensation for their losses, because they were classified as hostiles. My grandfather, Dick, and my other grandfather, Jasper, they were never compensated for, for anything. In fact, they were in hiding because of fear of being killed. 
Since the 1960s, the Wounded Knee Survivors Association has sought an official apology from the U.S. government, compensation for descendants of victims and survivors, a memorial, and the return of items stolen from the dead bodies of their ancestors. In addition, the organization has played a key role in tracing the descendants of those killed or wounded during the massacre. My father presented them, our family tree, and all our written documentation that was previously on record. My father would use that to consult these individuals and he would always have to prove himself. After that, they would um, write support letters confirming that he was, in fact, the grandson of Chief Spotted Elk. In the early 1990s, the Wounded Knee Survivors Association began pressing the Woods Memorial Library in Barrie, Massachusetts to return artifacts from their collection of stolen items from Wounded Knee, including Chief Spotted Elk's lock of hair. He would ask them their help. He would tell them the truth. He said that they, they, these people in Massachusetts have some of my grandpa's stuff, and so I'm trying to, trying to negotiate the return of these things. While Calvin's older brother Richard and their father worked for the return of Spotted Elk's hair, other Lakota families also claimed to be Spotted Elk's descendants and challenged Jasper's claim. Yeah, this Leonard Littlefinger, he's, um, he's claiming descendancy. His grandfather, his name is John Littlefinger. He believes that he was related by blood. In fact, it wasn't. He was related through a hunka ceremony. He was adopted in the um, mid-1800s. At the height of tribal court proceedings to determine the legitimate heirs of Spotted Elk, Calvin's father was struck by a car and severely injured. After my father got run over, he was on crutches, and my older brother, he sort of took over for my father, and he was very smart, he was very wise. He was focused on doing research, finding out more. He said, someday, if, if me and Dad ain't here, what are you going to do? How are you going to do this? So we're depending on you to not be crazy and foolish. So we want you to understand these things. We need you to grow up. Shortly afterward, tragedy struck again when a drunk driver killed Calvin's older brother, Richard, who was leading the family's court battle to restore their family name. This is my brother, Richard. He's the one that is supposed to uh, be here with me today. And he left me behind too, so I'm I miss him a lot. He taught me everything I, I know as a person, and he was a good brother. While Calvin's family mourned the loss of Richard, a controversial tribal judge designated Leonard Littlefinger as administrative trustee of the Spotted Elk family. My father, he can't take the loss of his son. At that point, I know he was heartbroken. He just loses interest in this, so. I tell some of the people that we were working with, I said, we need some time off from this. I asked him if we could just put it off for a while. He just lets it go. Shortly afterward, Leonard Littlefinger used the controversial court decision to force the Woods Memorial Library to hand over Spotted Elk's hair. This judge, Sidney Witt, he's the one that told Leonard Littlefinger not to burn the hair because we were still contesting it. We were still trying to determine who was the rightful heir. Working with Marie Not Help Him from the Wounded Knee Survivors Association, Jasper Spotted Elk offered to take a DNA test to settle the matter once and for all. This Leonard Littlefinger, he went against associate judge's order. He burned this lock of hair that could have disproved to the DNA what he was claiming to be, grandson of Chief Spotted Elk. He had a so-called ceremony that supposedly released my grandpa's spirit. I believe that's not right because the natives never really had a ceremony like that. Devastated by the loss of Spotted Elk's hair and with his health rapidly failing, Jasper summoned Calvin to his bedside. He said, I tried my best, but these people, this judge and some other people, they're corrupt. I'm getting old, son. I'm depending on you because Richard, he was handling this. He knew everything about it. Now he's gone. You're going to be alone someday. I put it on your shoulders, son. He, he, he tells me that it's, it's my fight now. His last words to me were, you're my hakela, my last one. At that time, I promised my father that I would take up this fight. 
I'll tell the whole world who we are because that's what my father wanted. He wanted the truth to come out. After returning Spotted Elk's hair in 1999, the Woods Memorial Library closed off the remaining exhibit from Wounded Knee, including Chief Spotted Elk's ceremonial pipe. Traditionally, this pipe was supposed to be passed down from father to son. I was supposed to come to my grandfather, my father, and then me. That was supposed to be my guidance. I was supposed to live my life according to that. But when Wounded Knee happened, it was taken from us along with our name. This angers me, but I always have to remember that anger brings out violence. And truth could be told without getting violent. I plan to negotiate the return of this pipe. I'm doing this for my father. I have to keep my promise while I'm alive. I have to do everything I can. I'm not looking for fame or fortune in this. I'm just trying to tell the truth that my father was trying to tell regarding Wounded Knee and who, who the true descendants are. I'm just trying to tell our family story 